The Bitcoin network is already good enough to hold a hundred trillion dollars worth of monetary energy. Thanks to Bitcoin. And I felt like, well, isn't it a great trade to buy land for Bitcoin? One is definitely more permanent. If Bitcoin goes up by a factor of 10, Grayscale would be a good investment. Also, only a tiny percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy the video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. If you really want to maximize your opportunity, you want to you want to move as much of your liquid capital as close to Bitcoin or the Bitcoin network as possible, because it is this uh, monetary network that's going from a trillion and presumably it could be worth a hundred trillion or more because the sum total of all money in the world is maybe four hundred trillion dollars worth of stocks, real estate, bonds and the like. Half of that is looking for a store of value. And the other half, honestly, truly wants to be invested in stocks or bonds or real estate. We've lost price discovery in the financial universe. So, so the single most accretive way to use money or time is invest in Bitcoin because you've got a once in a lifetime, once in 50 years, you know, transformation where all of this $200 trillion of money sitting in analog fiat instruments is being encrypted and converted into a digital instrument, which is thermodynamically superior, right? That's the first observation. Time is money. Convert your money into Bitcoin or something as close to it as you can. And the second of time, well, any time you're spending analyzing, it's like, it's like, Go to Venezuela, analyze every company, every piece of real estate, every bond index in Venezuela and figure out which ones you want to invest in. And the answer, Angelo, is it's all a waste of time, right? <laughs> Everything you're doing, if you're analyzing frequencies of a minute, a day, a week, a month, that's a waste of time. If, if I told you I know how it all ends, right? Once you know how it all ends, the, the, the only use of time is how do I buy more Bitcoin? <laughs> but take all your money, buy Bitcoin, then take all your time, figure out how to borrow more money to buy more Bitcoin, then take all your time and figure out what you can sell to buy Bitcoin. And if you absolutely love the thing that you're that you don't want to sell it, go mortgage your house and buy Bitcoin with it. And if you've got a business that you love because your family works for the business that's in your family for 37 years and you can't bear to sell it, mortgage it, finance it, and convert the proceeds into the hardest money on earth, which is Bitcoin. So what I would say is use all your time to acquire Bitcoin, finance entities and weaker currencies to buy Bitcoin, or educate yourself on why this makes sense if you're not sure, and then educate everybody around you. You know, if you're working for a company that's got $100 million in the treasury, you ought to convince the CEO and the board of directors to convert the treasury to Bitcoin. That's the most creative thing you can do. That'd be worth billions to them. It's like, if you were to say to me, Mike, it's the year 2000, you're in Argentina. What's the best use of your time? The best use of my time is figure out how to get all of my money converted into dollars and get it out of Argentina <clears throat> because I'm going to lose 99.5% of the money if I don't. Nothing else matters. <clears throat> uh, do you believe in the 80-20 rule, which I know could apply to Bitcoin, but I'm going to evolve that a little bit. Why not apply the 80-20 rule to the top 20%? That's 64% of effects for just 4% of the causes. And how about again, and again, the multiplier effect? Yeah, I guess I, I wanna understand that better. Maybe you could elaborate. Like, Are you familiar with the, well, Richard Koch wrote about it or Pareto's principle of 80-20, that 20? I, I am familiar, but I'm like, I'm trying to figure out like against what, for example, like, are you telling me to look at 20, there's 5,000 publicly traded companies. What I'm telling you is that none of them matter. I'm not yeah. telling you to evaluate a thousand of them or 20% of them. Like here, I'm t what I'm saying is if you're in an airplane and someone punches their elbow through the, through the window and it's depressurizing and you have a million things you could think about or do when the oxygen mask drops out of the space above your head, there's only one thing that matters. Put the oxygen mask on. <laughs> like, like you don't need to overanalyze. There's one thing that matters a lot. So, you know, I, I, 
I'm not quite sure where to go with the 80-20. If you, if you gave me uh, a sample of things, I would tell you whether I'd look at 20%. But what I would say is if, if there's 100 people in front of you and one of them has a gun and they're pointing it at you, that's the one to duck. I, right? that, that in and of itself, Michael, would be great oh. advice. I'm going to go rapid fire on some Bitcoin-centric questions. You actually hinted at one of them a couple of minutes ago. With interest rates close to zero, why doesn't every corporate issue convertible debt basically at zero buy Bitcoin and then lend out the Bitcoin at six to eight percent? They should. The, the, the most screaming home run idea right now is you borrow a billion dollars at one, two, three, five percent interest and you buy a billion in Bitcoin which is yielding 200% over the last decade. It's a 200% arbitrage. I used them, I used the phrase from Archimedes, you know, give me a, a lever long enough in a fulcrum to, uh, to, to place it on and I can move the world. The fulcrum is Bitcoin, it's the hard point and the lever is just leverage. And the best idea for everybody is finance your future cash flows in, in a weak currency and buy a strong asset with them. Does the Grayscale Trust going from a massive premium to NAV <clears throat> to a discount pose any unknown risk? I don't think so. I think it's, I mean, the marketplace is now just arbitraging out the premium to normal, but if Bitcoin goes up by a factor of 10, Grayscale would be a good investment. The Genesis block is unique because it has 50 Bitcoin reward subsidy that can never be spent. Is this symbolic or is this part of what makes Bitcoin blockchain technically superior? I think it's symbolic to a lot of people because there's a religious component to Bitcoin. <laughs> but at the end of the day, uh, Bitcoin is a bank in cyberspace with no more than 21 million units and the value of bitcoin is going to approach the sum of all the money that's deposited in that bank adjusted for the fiat currency inflation rate and so ultimately take how much money is in the bank divide by 21 million uh if, if someone if they did move it wouldn't matter to me if they don't move it doesn't it's better if they don't but mm -hmm. at the end of the day there's 21 million bitcoin if a trillion dollars is invested in Bitcoin, that, that tags Bitcoin at about $50,000 a coin. When someone buys another trillion dollars worth of it, the price is going up and then the price is going up based upon the rate of monetary inflation because it's the safe haven. Since Bitcoin blockchain is a dominant digital monetary network, will applications eventually be built on the Omni layer that fosters innovation in NFTs, igniting the Bitcoin blockchain to become the underpinnings of the internet of value? I think there'll be an explosion of all sorts of, of layer two solutions. They're already there. Coinbase is a layer two solution. Binance is a layer two solution. Square and PayPal are layer two solutions. Grayscale is a layer two solution. Every company that ever plugged their product or service or mobile app into Bitcoin is a layer two, and they're all facilitating millions of transactions a day on the layer two. And then they're using the base layer as the underlying settlement layer. There are probably 10,000 companies that are plugged into it a big way. There'll be hundreds of thousands. There'll be billions of transactions in these layer two networks that ultimately will be settled on the layer one network, or they'll use the underlying blockchain as the fundamental store of value and integrity of the network. Will Taproot make the Bitcoin blockchain fast and scalable? Um, we'll see. I, I think that uh, over time, Taproot will make the Bitcoin blockchain better. Um, Could it compromise? I, you know, my, I, fall into the, I fall in the category of people that thinks the Bitcoin network is already good enough to hold $100 trillion worth of monetary energy and we should make it better carefully and in a responsible fashion and prudently and yeah it should upgrade but it doesn't need to go fast and it does and it's not needful of anything uh to be successful so i i wouldn't rush it but i wouldn't stop it either i would just be very careful in moving forward uh and I guess related to that question, does the taproot compromise the security of the Bitcoin network? I, I don't think it's going to compromise the security of the network. I think that 
that uh, the upgrades in Taproot will make the network better if properly implemented. Norwegian industrial giant Acre ASA established a new firm called CT to invest in the Bitcoin ecosystem. They already have purchased 1,170 Bitcoin. Is this the beginning of the end of global trade settled in U.S. dollars? No, I think that the U.S. dollar is going to continue to be pretty popular. <laughs> I don't think it's going anywhere. I think that um, that uh, this is just part of the continual trend of companies adopting Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. It's really the beginning of the end of, if you want to look at something which is ending, it's the end of gold as a store of value. I think that uh, there's $10 trillion of gold and traditionally it's been thought of as a hard money and I think that it's dying. It's being eaten by Bitcoin. And so what's going to happen is a trillion dollars worth of Bitcoin is going to grow to be $10 trillion. And gold's going to return to its ornamental value as a, a source of jewelry and the like. And so you got to think of Bitcoin as digital gold. Bitcoin's not going to replace the dollars, the world's reserve currency, and, and it doesn't need to. I think people get distracted thinking Bitcoin is, is a currency. It's not a currency. If you know anything about tax, you know that when you move a currency around, you, uh, you can't afford uh, to incur a tax obligation. So if the IRS is going to tax you when you transfer a um, million dollars of Bitcoin, then it makes it utterly impossible to use it as a currency. On the other hand, it makes it ideal to use as digital gold or a store of value. And that's where I think you'll see it. And what you're going to see there is more and more companies will do this. Hundreds more companies than thousands of companies will do this because it's just a logical base layer for a treasury reserve.